So they're telling me the Akashic Records is like the code of each person. Like... The DNA, if you will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that DNA encodes the physicality of something? Yeah, like if we were in a video game, us as a character would have our own set of scripts from code. That is the information that is within the Akashic Records that we take out of the Akashic Records and make physical. So it's a rule that says, you are a physical being, you can't go through a wall. Sucks to suck. Are you guys excited to listen and watch me try to do things with my tongue to make words? It's gonna be bad. Hi, I'm Em. And I'm Liv, and we're your Medicine Kick. Today we're gonna be talking about the Akashic Records. Okay, let me do that different. <laughs> I have to think about how the Akashic Records makes me feel, but we just did two spoopy videos back to back and I'm an emotionally compromised teenage girl, so my funny hat is just very sideways today. <sighs> the Akashic Records, that's all you're gonna get. <laughs> em and I have figured this out spiritually as mediums through our guides and spiritual guides, because there's a difference. Um, that the Akashic Records is for us, we interpret it as like a giant library if you want to join our Akashic Castle thing. In our Patreon. In our Patreon because we tone it to like a castle. So when we talk to people and we do spirit guide reads, readings and things like that or talk to people's spirit guides, we have found consistently that everybody has a spirit guide that is from the Akashic Records. And they all look very similar to us, or at least how they present to us to let us know or validate that they're from the Akashic Records. And they always give us like librarian feels. Here. But there's also people that claim the Akashic Records doesn't look like a library to them. And it's yes. more like, I don't know, the hard drive of a computer type thing. It's just that the same idea, but it is more modern day human things. Mm. So it's interesting because the paper that I told you I want to put oh they talk the about it their literal what is it it's called like the intro to their paper equates the, the Akashic records to the internet yes and I was like I've never thought about it that way before yeah. it's because you are more connected to books than you are technology based things because I'm an old person so that's why you view the Akashic records as books instead of like a hard drive of information or the internet. Well, it's also how spirit presents it to me too, because yeah. it's relatable. If someone to gave you. me, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. But exactly. I never thought of it like a database. And then when I yeah. read her intro, I was like, huh? Maybe I, maybe I should use that. Yeah, there's some. But it's also that not me. It's a database. So weird. So in occultism, the Akashic Records is a compendium of pictorial records or memories of all events, actions, thoughts, and feelings that have occurred since. The beginning of time. Is it since the beginning of time or before that? It's since the beginning of time because before that it's different. Oh, gotcha. There's a different place for that. Sorry. <laughs> that was the immediate answer I got. And the way they showed it to me clairvoyantly was my association with God or like the creator source thing is <laughs> the Big Bang. So I see like black space and then out of space there's this huge explosion that protrudes to the right. And on the other hand side, it was just black. And they're like, this is where the Akashic Records started. And that is what Em is asking you about. <laughs> so it's all of that, which is basically what Em and I have been told by our guides is that it's a library cataloging everything that has happened for every single person in every single event ever. And every single realm and dimension. So ever. it is not just human earth, physical realm things. It's beyond that. Yes. Because people are going to think it's just, oh, it's a library of human people. So. No, it's everything. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because Akashic Records, the word Akashic, comes from the Sanskrit word Akasha. And Akasha means ether, sky, or atmosphere. That's cool. Yeah. Which is that's really, where really the cute. Akashic Records is. It's a, people talk about the Akashic Records as being in the... Eighth dimension. I don't know how many dimensions there are because people ask this a lot, that a lot. But they explain that the Akashic Records is in the middle of the dimensions because it's far enough away from the lower dimensional things that could like manipulate the information in here. But it's easily accessible from the top and the bottom. Interesting. You're welcome. I don't know if that's actually true, but... Cool. What I have for the overview is... In religion, theosophy and the philosophical school called anthroposophy. 
The Akashic Records are a compendium of all universal events, thoughts, words, emotions, and intent ever to have occurred in the past, the present, or the future in terms of all entities and life forms, not just human, like M said. But the Akashic Records is specifically from Theosophy. Theosophy is a religion that was established in New York City approximately around 1875 and it was formed primarily by Helena Blavatsky, who we so was. talked about in one of our very, very first Manifestation. videos. Manifestation. Manifestation. <laughs> if you don't know, she's a Russian immigrant um, and she was very, very, very important in the spiritualist movement within America. They have this group of people Theosophy or Theosophists have this group of people, which I assume from what I read to give like relatability to the viewers that might not know anything about this, would be like priests or oh, reverends, okay. and mm -hmm. they call them the masters. So they're people that practice Theosophy, but for whatever spiritual reasons are higher than the other people that are in it. Mm -hmm. And the masters are attempting to revive the knowledge of the ancient religion. Gotcha. They just call it the ancient religion. I think they're like talking about theosophy itself as being the ancient religion mm -hmm. that was once found worldwide, which will rise again. They're attempting to make this religion that was once worldwide and collective rise again to eclipse all of the modern age religions. They like show me these masters, they're called masters. Mm -hmm. They're like standing over this like light square on the ground mm -hmm. and they get information from it from the akashic records i see like a giant book that they like turn over to like read the information but they're not reading it because they can't actually see the book there they're just getting the information from it they're like telling me that they because i was like why do they need to read the akashic records they get information about how the world is and why people are a certain way because I don't understand why you would need other information other than your own Akashic Records stuff. Interesting. Because they need the information from the Akashic Records to help other people that come to them. The Akashic Records is believed by Theosophists to be encoded in a non-physical plane of existence known as the mental plane. While I was reading this sentence, mental plane stuck out to me and my note was is it the mental plane? Because the mental plane is what I think of as the subconscious or creative conscious plane. And that's not what it is. It's different. Because it's not just relating to people. <laughs> so I put my spirit guides say it is higher than, quote, the mental plane of human consciousness. It is not the creative consciousness, but higher because it encompasses all other physical and non-physical realms of existence. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you got that too, because I asked them, I was like, do they mean it like the mental plane that Em and I talk about? Because yeah, the mental plane is here and it's like up here. Way up there. Yeah. yeah. I'm so glad you see the same thing. I was freaking <laughs> out while I was doing this. <laughs> Helena Blavatsky was the big spearheader for this idea of the Akashic Records. However, she did not actually coin the term Akashic Records. She never actually used those words or even Akasha, I believe. She says she used the word Akasha. Anyways, Helena Blavatsky did not actually use the term Akashic Records, but characterized it as a sort of life force, referring to it as a concept. So she said, you know, there's this thing, this life force, whatever, but she never used the term Akashic Records. She related, she said, there are these indestructible tablets of astral light that record both past and future human thought and actions. That's what she said. So with her concept of of the records, but not actually giving it a name per se. Alfred Percy Sinnott wrote in his book, Esoteric Buddhism, about Henry Steele Olcott's writings in A Buddhist Catchism that Olcott roughly explained two metaphysical concepts that are fixed, one of which is called viz, which is now explained as the Akasha, and Nirvana. So Henry Olcott said there are two things that are fixed, viz and Nirvana, and viz is the Akasha or that ether place. And that congruent with the ideas of theosophy, everything within physicality, so like you and me, has come out of, or is based off of the Akasha. So this ethereal realm that is in the atmosphere, everything that is physical has 
been created based off of the things that reside in that realm. They're telling me the Akashic Records is like the code of each person. Like... The DNA, if you will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because the DNA encodes the physicality of something. Yeah, like if we were in a video game, us as a character would have our own set of scripts from code that is the information that is within the Akashic Records that we take out of the Akashic Records and make physical. So it's a rule that says, you are a physical being, you can't go through a wall. Sucks to suck. The rules. <laughs> and then Henry Olcott then went on to say that this hypothesis follows in theosophy and it is considered law in theosophy that motion inherent to the realm of Akasha itself and the physicality it births eventually passes away. And he states that nothing comes out of nothing. He put no thing ever comes out of nothing. And he further explains that he is privy to this knowledge due to his state of individual enlightenment and the fixed metaphysical existence of early Buddhism, which is being held permanently in the Akasha, which he has access to because of his individual enlightenment. I have a question. Yes. M asked me if the reason Henry Olcott could talk or access the Akashic records, it's not just because of his individual enlightenment and the fact that Buddhism, early Buddhism, is kept in the Akashic records that his enlightenment allows him access to. It's he was able to reach his state of enlightenment uh, quicker because of his past life as a higher dimensional being. Because they're showing me you have DNA from your physical body, but when you're a spiritual being, you have a different kind of DNA. You have a different set of rules. So you, being a human being, is unique because you have this set of rules as a human being, physical thing, and then you also have the rules for your soul. So the people that can access the Akashic Records are people that soul are usually from a higher plane. So they have a higher vibration, in which case they can use their soul's energy to reach the Akashic Records. That's what they're telling you. It's... <laughs> and we thought we weren't going to have enough for this topic. No, you me, I mean me. <laughs> yeah. So he's basically saying everything within physicality comes from something that is held or understood within Akasha or this, in this realm of existence. And that nothing can come from nothing. It comes from the Akasha. And because of its physicality, that is why it dies. It has to go away at some point because it's no longer a part of the Akasha. It's like a printer. Oh my god, he's so interesting. They're okay. explaining it to me because I said it like a printer, but we're equating the Akashic records to DNA. So DNA encodes the instructions that allow things to be made a certain way. So if the Akasha is the DNA and the realm itself is a printer and everything that it spits out is is like based off of something that is already up there or they have information on roughly. Oh, it's so cool, I'm sorry. What? They're telling me that's why so many realms can be different because if you encode DNA different, if you switch two of the bases, it can switch whatever comes out. Mm -hmm. So you can have things that are like parallel universes to things that are completely, absolutely different but still plausible because all you did was switch the bases. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we talk about, you said that the Akasha is way up here, right? Yeah. Well, human existence would be down here. Yeah, we're a lower realm. Yes, we are very much a lower realm, which is why a lot of people incarnate into this realm, because it's, it's why hard. A lot of times it's hard to get information from the Akashic Records because we're so far down. So there's things on the end of DNA strands called telomeres. And okay. telomeres have been hypothesized to, they're basically like um, extra DNA. Because every time your cells replicate, there are things that go wrong because it's just human nature. Things are going to get messed up. You're still going to be able to exist. However, they have equated or hypothesized that the length of a person's telomeres is related or correlated to how long they're going to live. Because if your DNA messes up a whole bunch of times, but it has this much extra room that it has to be able to cut from, you're still gonna have this much more room to continue having mistakes made. But if your telomeres are this long and you have the same amount of human errors within your DNA every time your cells replicate, you're not gonna have as much wiggle room to continue making mistakes, therefore you're going to die. Something's going to go wrong and you're gonna get sick, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. So if you have longer telomeres on your DNA, it's been hypothesized that it's 
related to life expectancy. They're showing me that like very similar to that. Since the Akasha is way up here and we're down here, our telomeres aren't as long. <laughs> Ah, so because they had to fall this much more yeah. to go through it, so mm -hmm. we're not as connected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which goes but. into why our existences aren't as long. Yeah, but it's weird because he says everything passes away. Yes. Because it's from the Akashic. It's because we fell farther dimensionally. Mm -hmm. Telomeres. <laughs> our spiritual telomeres are shorter. Code. Goals. It's weird. <laughs> Jesus. <clears throat> So that's uh, what Sinet and Olcott had to say. Now we go back on to a good old Charles Leadbeater, who was important in Manifestation, I think, too. Um, all of these guys are big, giant American spiritualist movement, like, what is it? Tycoons. Let's use that, because that's a business term, and we're going to put that in here, because it'll make people upset. <laughs> you can't use that word! Or it'll confuse the ads. <laughs> so... <coughs> We've had this idea of Akasha, which strictly comes from Eastern ideas in India. Buddhist, Hindu, whatever it, it, it is, those religions that are over there that would use the Sanskrit word Akasha. And they have been taken from these Western people during the spiritualist movement and their ideas are being put upon this word. So eventually, after Helena Blavatsky and... Uh, what was his name? Olcott and the other one, Percy. His middle name is Percy. Sinnet. Mm -hmm. And uh, Thomas Leadbeater comes over and he's like, I'm gonna give this name. And he does. And he calls it the Akashic Records. And he says that he can clairvoyantly read it as if it was like a book. Oh. <laughs> and I said, why is clairvoyance always the clair they talk about? If there are mediums and psychics out there that only have the ability of clairvoyance, can't there be the same people who only have the ability of clairgustance? Because it's a very human thing because people are very reliant of their sight. I did not know that there were mediums out there that are only clairvoyant. We're, we talk about it in the three mediums of the round table. My mother yeah. was like, there are people that are only clairaudient. There are people that are only... I have so many clairs, it's ridiculous. It's literally just like talking and using the senses that I already use to experience metaphysical things. I feel like they do have the other ones, but they're not at the same level, so they were disregard them. Mm. I'm talking to Rosalie. Okay. She's telling me all this information. Because they told me the same thing, but I was like, that's really stupid. They just limit themselves. Like, yeah, because if they get information from other clairs, they either don't notice it or it's um, confusing. So like when I started getting visual information, I was like, that's an ink blotch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, I, I'm not clairvoyant. That's how they perceive it. Just how people, just how we experience the physical world with our five senses now, I, that's how I experience metaphysical information. They're all, she's also telling me that there are people that have a hard time fathoming different ways of thinking, which is why people who are neurodivergent are more spiritually in tune or more sensitive to things mm. because there are people that can't visualize things if you can't visualize things or can't fathom the idea of visualizing things why would you be getting visual information in your head oh no i love it when i get lots of things well, like that that's what i'm saying it makes my brain go yes that's why it makes people say i'm not <clears throat> clairvoyant i'm not clairaudient i could never fathom having voices or sight in my head it's not that they or incapable of it is that they're blocking themselves from getting that information. It is unfathomable for them to know those things. I have another question. Yeah. How would you be able to do an Akashic Records reading? Can you access the Akashic Records? I feel like um, Blue Man Dude is telling me yes, but I'm not ready for it. Oh, he's saying you're not ready for it? He says I'm saying that. Don't put words in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought too. I was like, um... <laughs> You just don't think you can do it. <laughs> well, I just don't know how to do it. Well, can I do it? What does Blue Man say about that? He pointed over to your guy. What? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how Akashic Record reading go. Well, try it. Try to read my Akashic Records. I've never seen someone do an Akashic Records reading. If you want that, join Patreon, because we'll put that content in another video. You want to do a Patreon live where we do Akashic Record readings? We can just do a Patreon extra right now where we do Akashic Record reading. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> if you guys are interested in that, join Patreon. Patreon link will be in the description below. 
So what do you guys think of the Akashic Records? Do you or do you read Akashic Records? Have you, you had do? an Akashic reading? Yeah, let us know in the comments. We're really curious because uh, I've never actually seen someone get an Akashic Records reading before. I also just think it's weird that we knew these things and then I read about it. We just have spiritual beings telling us everything. It's really weird. <laughs> it's really cool. So if you guys want to see our next video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you guys in the next one. But wait. Check out these videos next. I talked to someone from the Akashic Records. And uh, yeah, we'll our beautiful you patrons. We forgot about the patrons. What happens after we say, we are your meta psychics? We are your meta psychics. <clears throat> Can't talk. These are our patrons. You could be on there too. You could see us do an Akashic Records reading. Ha, Patreon people. So, we just posted a video about the Akashic Records and I asked Liv if she could do an Akashic Records reading on me because we've never done that before nor if we ever watched it, but her blue man dude says that she would be able to do it, so we're gonna try and see if it works out. They're showing me like a dark room and a door, but it's up higher dimensionally because I'm looking upwards. <sighs> there's not necessarily people or voices, there's lights. I see that there's a green light, it's like a soft green light and it's more of a ball and it's talking to a white light that is a vertical sort of line of light and my impression of this is that the green ball of light is you 